Hey there, Alex from Handy Software, here today to talk about setting up a DVPN node through Handy Host to host your bandwidth uh, for passive income. Uh, so for those of you not familiar with Handy Host, uh, Handy Host is some software that we wrote uh, basically to monetize your existing hardware and bandwidth to make passive income over utility blockchains. So three of the projects that we host, uh, host on with Handy Host, uh, one, what we're covering today is DVPN, uh, Sentinel. Uh, so DVPN, as the name suggests, uh, you're renting out your bandwidth and essentially providing a DV, uh, VPN node through their blockchain product. And the bonus of that, that node also resolves handshake names. So for anybody using your service, they can resolve handshake top level domains. Uh, if you didn't know or figure it out by the name of our company, uh, Handy Software, uh, we're huge Handshake fans. Uh, we mined the first blocks of Handshake, uh, made the first miner, and uh, we're really promoting anything in the ecosystem that really helps with the decentralized web. Um, so beyond DVPN, we have two other projects that we're, we're also rolling out with this release of Handy Host. Uh, one of them is a cache. We've got other tutorials. Uh, a cache is basically uh, like like hosting EC2 servers on uh, on your on your hardware, so you can set up a server cluster and rent those out for money. Uh, and then third, as well, we've got videos for that. It's Saya. Um, Saya is like renting out your extra storage for money, um, and you can there's you know huge tutorials on both uh, you know showing off our machines that we're doing for hosting that you can build yourself, and as well uh, using the software. Um, but yeah, so for DVPN, uh, this, for what we're doing today, I'm just using a Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, if you're going to use a Raspberry Pi, definitely use the 4, because we're going to be rolling 64-bit operating system on it, which you're going to want that extra CPU and RAM for. Um, so definitely, if you're going to, if you're going to go cheap, uh, Raspberry Pi is the way to go. And one note as well, you can, uh, you can very well host uh, an Akash, you know, basically manage an Akash node through this Raspberry Pi as well. Uh, which, you know, if you don't want to buy extra hardware for that, you don't want to do SIA, you're only interested in a cache and or DVPN, great, this is the route for you. Uh, all in all, I think I paid about $75 for this on, on eBay. It's a pretty cheap machine. And the one other thing to note uh, that you're going to want to pick up um, if you're doing a Raspberry Pi, uh, definitely don't use the SD storage. It does have an SD storage slot. It's just really slow, uh, like extremely slow, unreliable. SSDs always go, or uh, <laughs> micro SDs always go down. Uh, they're breaking all the, all the things. Um, so what I recommend doing, um, I picked this up. It's just a case, actually. It's a $20 case, and inside this case, is uh, a, a SATA drive, like a M, M card SATA, so like $55, $60. And you can get these as well for NVMe drives. Uh, you know, just we'll, we'll throw some links uh, down below to this exact build, but overall about another $70 for the storage. And it's a 512 gig drive. It connects over USB 3 to the Pi, so we get, you know, roughly like 10 times the bandwidth speed, uh, you know, of IO from the disk to the machine and it's way more reliable and safe than relying on an SSD and then losing it later and having to rebuild everything. Um, so yeah, that's, that's more or less in a nutshell for the hardware part of this. Now let's go ahead and have a look at how we set up the software for all of this. All right, hey everybody, we are back here on my uh, laptop. I'm uh, just looking at the web page hosted uh, on my Raspberry Pi on my local network. Uh, if you're looking for generally how to set up your Raspberry Pi, check out our guide. It's linked up in this document, um, and it's it's pretty quick and painless, but didn't want to go through all that on the video since we're here just to talk about Sentinel. Um, but again, yeah, this is uh, just in my web browser, uh, looking at an IP that's on my local network that, that will uh, be shown when you start up, uh, start up your nodes. Um, so yeah, this is our splash, pa splash page, and we're just going to click on Sentinel. And uh, this, this is uh, more or less what a node looks like when we come into it online. Um, and I have this up uh, just, you know, kind of test things out because nobody's connected to my node yet. It's really just for testing. Um, but yeah, when, uh, when you do have connections, you'll be able to see your subscribers uh, in this nice stream graph and how they're connected to you. Um, but let's pretend that we just started a brand new node. It's a brand new setup. Um, so first thing that's going to, you know, you'll come into this page and it'll ask you to create a wallet. Um, uh, 
and uh, give it a wallet name. Um, we're just going to call this one blank because, um, yeah, one of the key things is uh, to start up your host, you need money in it. Um, and I already have one with money here uh, that we'll just use for the sake of the demo. And as well, you can import a wallet if you choose um, and put in your seed phrase there if you need to. But we're just going to create a brand new one. And it'll bring back our, uh, our address and as well uh, your mnemonic phrase and write this down somewhere super safe. Yes, I've written it down, and we will not ever show it here again. So make sure you write it down, verify, uh, you know, everything you need to do on your end. Um, and there we go, we burned it. Um, so next, uh, we'll come into the configuration screen. And uh, this is where uh, most of this is filled out for us. You really don't have to do anything here if you don't want to. Um, in my case, I'm going to choose another wallet, one with money in it, just for the sake of the demo. Um, and it brings up all of our wallets. Um, I'm going to use real monies. Um, and then as well, our ports. Uh, and as well, one note, it's, it's spelled out here, but open this port up to this IP address on your router. Um, so your, your internet service provider or yourself, uh, you have a router, log into it. Uh, there's plenty of guides online how to do that. Um, but yeah, you log in and uh, you know open up uh, this port for TCP to this IP address, and as well, uh, WireGuard for the VPN service, open up um, you know this port uh, that it suggests um, to UDP for this IP address. Um, and then you can set your price that you want per gigabyte. Say you have awesome fiber and you think you're super valuable, cool, set it, set it for more. Um, and if you have a crappy connection like me, <laughs> set, it, set it for less. Um, and one thing to note here, uh, all these prices are in micro DVPN, um, and it spells it out, one, you know, one million micro DVPN to one DVPN. And you can put your price in in DVPN here, and it'll just convert that for you. But, uh, you know, for the, sake, uh, for the sake of this, we're just going to leave it in micro DVPN. I'm going to charge one DVPN, or about four cents right now, uh, per gigabyte that I provide to people. Um, and then as well, uh, the remote IP address is uh, it's it's entered in here for you. This is your global IP address. Um, but as well, you can, uh, as I mentioned in other videos, you can generate um, I you know domain names like this that map to your global IP at a service that that we use called noip.com. It's free. And uh, you can get a couple domains with that. You can also pay and get like 30. Um, and the most annoying part if you're on free is every month they send you an email and you just click a link to, uh, to keep your, your free address open. Um, but again, noip.com, you can set up, a, you know, set up a host name and then instead of a global IP address in here, you just paste in your whatever you make up, like sentinelhop2.org, you can paste that in there and, and save away. And then and when everybody connects, it'll go to that, uh, that DNS. But again, it's easy enough to find out your IP. So for my case, I'm just using my global IP. Um, the last thing we do here is hit save. And party guy, hey, we saved our node config. That's great. Uh, so now we want to start up our node. Um, so we go to node status. And if you've ever run your node before, you'll have your old logs listed here. Um, and I'm just going to click on launch DVPN node, enter in my password. And as well, you can select here if you want. Um, you can auto launch DVPN on application startup. So whether it's on Linux or on Mac, um, this will uh, the application will start um, you know when the machine starts. Uh, in Mac's case, whenever you log in because you have to log in. Uh, but on Linux, it starts you know if the machine restarted in the middle of the night, you're fine. Uh, it's going to relaunch whenever that starts up, and that's up to you to do that or not. Uh, I'm just going to leave it off in this case. Um, and then I'm going to click launch. And then what will happen, we see uh, starting DVPN node, uh, reading my config, you know, it's going to log some stuff, perform a speed test. And one thing to note here, uh, you do need to have DVPN in your wallet. Um, and if you don't, if you have zero DVPN, I mean, one, you'll click, click start node, it'll fail. Um, but as well, you'll see a, a warning above the, the halt or start button. Uh, that you need to have money in your wallet. And really that you don't need to have much in it. 
Uh, it's ultimately for transaction fees. So like every, you know, every set interval of time, I can't remember, I think it's a couple few hours, it's in the config, but uh, you'll, you'll end up providing a status uh, to the network and that'll, that'll charge a, a transaction fee, which is usually like two hundredths of a single DVPN. So not, it's not very much, it's super cheap. Um, but you do have to have something in there. Um, I usually keep anywhere between 25 and 50 DVPN in my wallet just uh, just to cover transaction fees and that sort of thing. Um, so here we go. My uh, my speed test is done um, and everything started up and it's you know it uh, just logs out whatever it sees here. Um, most of this doesn't mean anything to you, but uh, it can if you want to look at it. And then if we pop over into our dashboard. Um, we'll see, once I'm online, um, we'll see my, uh, my moniker, which we auto-generate. You can make it into anything you want. Um, and then as well, up in the top right, uh, we see HNS, a, HNS and DVPN is active. Um, one, one awesome note, I think I mentioned it before, but DVPN, under the scenes, it, uh, it resolves handshake HNS names. Uh, they're they're top-level domains. So anybody who uses your service um, can resolve handshake names. Uh, it's really exciting. Um, and then as well, that's that's about it. I mean, you come into your dashboard, you can check, uh, you know, on you know how many people are connected to me. Um, I'll show you what my uh, my bigger machine. Oops, that's not it. Uh, one second. Yeah, my bigger machine. Um, yeah, it's not online at the moment, but this is kind of what it looks like after some time. Uh, it's it's hasn't been up it's, again. I just do a lot of testing, but uh, you can see how many sessions uh, have I have I completed? How many subscribers do I have? How much bandwidth have they used, both up and down, and total contract remaining? Um, because ultimately, like when somebody signs up with you, they uh, they make a contract. So this one was like me testing myself for like 80 gigs. Um, you know, and once I fulfill that, that 80 gigs, then I get paid, um, you know, whatever that price I've set is, you know, if it's, uh, you know, one gig, one DVPN per gig, I'm going to get my 80 DVPN once they finish that contract. So don't expect to see the money rolling in like, uh, in real time, but we do give you this nice view. So you can see a donut chart of, you know, what's been used, what's remaining. And, uh, you know, really they set that. So like this was somebody who hit my node the other day. And they used very little, um, haven't come back. But you know, once they use that 60 uh, 60 gigs, uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be rolling in 60 dvpn. Um, but yeah, that's that's more or less it. Uh, it's very simple to set this up and get going, um, and and start start making passive income off your extra bandwidth. So again, uh, you know, thanks very much for your time and patience. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, uh, drop them in the in the comments section or send us an email. Um, and as well, we'll have, uh, you know, have some, some links uh, here in, in, the, in the description that will link you to how, how just to set up your Raspberry Pi if you're doing that. Or if you've seen our other videos, um, you know, we have kind of a master node that, you know, it has like 20 terabytes of disk space on it for SIA hosting. It, uh, you know, it hosts DVPN and it'll manage uh, your cache nodes if you decide to do a cache hosting. But again, uh, thanks very much for your time and have a great day.